Okay, chemistry, welcome back. Um, today we're going to go into using combustion analysis to figure out the formula of an unknown compound. So this is a real problem that exists in forensics that uh, you'll be at a crime scene and there will be something there and the police officer doesn't know what it is and would like to find out. There are a handful of ways that we can go about this. So we have very specific tests. You may recall very back in, in the beginning of the, the year that we talked about how to identify um, the mass of small compounds and isotopes by using a mass spectrometer. Well, that's a very expensive machine and really not available with the most places. Um, but what we're going to go into today is a combustion analysis, a common analysis that's still done, and uh, the way that they do it is a little bit more sophisticated than what we can do in the lab, but uh, the data that comes out of that is pretty easy to analyze. So that's what we're going to focus on. So um, combustion. So you may recall that combustion is combining something with oxygen and that reaction producing enough heat to make a flame. So, for example, if I take any hydrocarbon here, I combine it with oxygen, I'll get out carbon dioxide and water. But notice that I get different, no, different amounts of carbon dioxide. So if I take C2H4 and I burn that, I'll get two carbon dioxide for every single molecule of C2H4 I get. And I'll get two water molecules for every molecule of C2H4 that I, that I burn. Notice for C4H8, so for every... Um, every single molecule of C4H8, I'll get four molecules of carbon dioxide coming out. So this is the idea that we're going to use, that we're going to use and carefully figure out how much carbon dioxide comes out of something, and that'll help us figure out how many carbons must have been there, and we'll figure out carefully how much water comes out of something, and that'll help us figure out how much hydrogen must be there, and we have other analysis to figure out nitrogen and oxygen as well. But the idea is, is pretty straightforward. So for combustion analysis, we very carefully uh, weigh something and then we burn it and we measure how much oxygen we put into that. Um, and then we very carefully uh, weigh how much water comes out of that and how much carbon dioxide comes out of that and how much nitrogen compound comes out of that. And so the process is pretty straightforward, but it produces data, not an answer for us, right? So what we get out of this is that we get percentages. So we'll say, well, I have something that's 40% carbon by mass 45% oxygen by mass and 15% hydrogen by mass, right? So our challenge is how do we get from this information to chemical formula for something? So uh, here are the four steps that we're going to go through. Uh, I encourage you to pause the video and write these down. You're going to need to know these. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to deal with a percentage sign. I'm going to convert that to grams just by pretending they're 100 grams. Then I need to get from mass to numbers of things, and the way we do that in chemistry is converting grams to moles. So I need to do that for each element that's involved. And the third step is I need to determine the ratio, and I'll do this in one or two steps. Um, the first step is always to divide each of those things by the smallest number of moles. Um, and sometimes I have to then go a step further and multiply everything by two or three to get to a, too close to a whole number. The last thing I'm going to do is write out the chemical formula. So let me go through it, through what this looks like. Uh, again, pause the video and go back to that. Write down those steps because you're going to need to know those. So here's a, there was an airplane crash. It's not real, right? So it's a, a strange case of uh, an airline crash. So there were eight passengers on this airline, and they've come across a variety of information about these uh, these passengers. And uh, it turns out there was a murder before the plane crash. That's right. You get to figure out who murdered who by doing chemistry. Okay, here's the here are the people that were on that, right? So a uh, number of people there, including a baker, a suspected drug dealer, and of course the leader of a terrorist organization. Go figure. The data that they collected looks like this. And I'm going to go through the first two of these so you'll be able to do this. This is homework for you if you're in my class. So uh, I'm, I'm going to do the first two for you. Write these down and then you got those two done and you'll have an example for how to do the other ones. So the first one, I'm going to read across. So passenger number one had uh, this much carbon, this much hydrogen, this much nitrogen, this much oxygen found in something that they found in the blood of that person. Passenger number two, uh, they did two samples on that person. They found some substance on that person's face and some other substance in that person's stomach. So we'll, we'll figure out. And again, I'm going to do the first two. All of, the, all of the things that we identify in this exercise is going to be one of these compounds. It'll be either codeine or cocaine or aspirin or spartamine or vanilla or chocolate or whatever it is, or rat poison. Right? So all of these things will come to this. So let me go through uh, the first couple of these. So the first one I'm going to do uh, is passenger number one. So it has 67.31% of carbon, 6.98% uh, of hydrogen, and 4.62% of nitrogen. 
and finally 21.10% of oxygen. Let me switch. Okay, so what I'm starting with, so I'm starting with this, these percentages. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I need to, per, you know, need to deal with the percentages. So I don't know what percentage to do with percentages, so I'm just going to convert these to grams. I'm going to change the sign from percent to grams, right? How easy is this? So 67.31, I'm going to pretend I had this many grams of carbon. I'm going to pretend that I had 100 grams of this whole thing, so that means I must have 6.98 grams of hydrogen. I must have had 4.62 grams of nitrogen. And I must have had 21.10 grams of oxygen. Okay, step number one, I'm done. How easy is this? You're doing good. Okay, so the next step I need to do, I need to get from mass to numbers of things. And the way we do this is with the moles. So I'm going to pull up my periodic table. I'm going to look up carbon, the atom carbon. I'm going to discover carbon has a mass of 12.01. So I'm going to arrange this. So 12.01 grams of carbon divided by one mole of carbon. Right, so notice my units are opposite, same as we were doing for, for hydrates and, and any, any conversion. Right, so I'm going to have my, uh, my mass opposite. I'm going to look up hydrogen. I'll discover hydrogen has a mass of 1.0 grams of hydrogen and one mole of hydrogen. This is from the periodic table. The same for nitrogen. Nitrogen has a mass of 14.01 grams of nitrogen and one mole of nitrogen. And oxygen, I'm do the same thing. I get 16.00 grams of oxygen and one mole of oxygen. So now I'm going to do some math. I'm going to be careful, right? So if I round too much, I will get the wrong answer. So I'm going to be careful to, to keep as many digits as I can stomach. So 7.31 divided by 12.01. I'm going to get uh, 5.6045. So I'm going to carry at least three. I'm not in this case. I'm carrying four digits past the decimal. So this is number of moles of carbon. And then I'm going to have uh, 6.98 and divide this by 1.01. And I'm going to carry as many digits as I can. 6.9109 uh, moles of hydrogen. And 4.62 divided by 14.01. It's going to give me. Uh, 0 0.3298 moles of nitrogen and lastly 21.1 uh, 0 divided by 16.00 is going to give me 1.319 well because 87 moles of oxygen okay so now essentially I've done the hard work, right? So I found the numbers of carbon. So for every 5.6045 carbon, I'll have 6.910 hydrogen and 0.328, right? So I've found my ratios. I just need to make it make more sense. I'm trying to get the whole number so I can get a formula out of this. So the way that we do this is the same as the hydrate. So I'm going to take my smallest one and I'm going to divide that into all of these. And so I'm going to take my my moles of carbon, I'm going to divide that by that smallest number that I had, which was this. And that's going to get me closer to a whole number. I'm going to take my moles of <clears throat> hydrogen and divide it by my small number, which is 3298. <clears throat> I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to take my moles of, of nitrogen and divide it by itself, right? So this one I don't need a calculator for. Two, nine, eight. Anything divided by itself is going to be one nitrogen, and I'll take my moles of oxygen. Zero point three two nine eight. Nothing special we're doing for chemistry here. We're just trying to get to a ratio that makes sense to us. Right? This is just math. So I take uh, this point three two nine eight, and I get uh, three point nine 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 oxygen. Uh, 6.9109 divided by 0.3298 is going to give me 20.95 of hydrogen. And uh, what I get? 5.6045 divided by 0.3298 is going to give me 16.99 of carbon. Right? So these are close enough, right? So I'm good here. So I'm going to round this, and I'm going to round this to 17 carbon. I'm going to round this to 21 hydrogen. I'm going to round this to 1 nitrogen. And I'm going to round this to 4 oxygen. And then I write my chemical formula. So my chemical formula is going to have C17, H21, 
one nitrogen and four oxygens and then I'm good so I'm gonna go look that up so let's see if that makes sense so uh, I'm gonna go back to my list of, of compounds uh, I'm gonna go here I'm gonna look for C17 and 21 H21 and O4 turns out that is the formula for cocaine and uh, that substance found in the bloodstream of passenger number one was cocaine you can decide who that was um, briefly, I'm going I'm to run through a second one. So we're going to do the same idea. So in this one, I didn't have to do the extra step of multiplying by two or three to get to a whole number. So let me go through the second one, which uh, I think is going to be an additional step. So the same idea, but we're going to go through the second one. So now I'm going to look at this substance that was found on the face of pastor number two. So I'm reading across this row here. So uh, this, in this case, this uh, person has, uh, what is it, 60, uh, 63.15 grams of carbon found in the sample is a five point oops percent carbon uh, 5.30 percent of hydrogen found in the sample those dashes mean there's no nitrogen there so only three things a 31.55 percent of oxygen was the third thing so let's go through this one briefly so let me go in here uh, sphere 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 there it is <clears throat> okay Step number one, I'm going to convert my percent to grams. So this is the same. I'm going to pretend I had um, 100 grams of this stuff. So that means I would have essentially 63.5 grams of carbon, 5.30 grams of hydrogen. All I'm doing is changing the percent sign to a gram sign. Grams of oxygen. Now I want to get from mass to numbers of things, and we do this with the moles. So this is going to be the same idea. I'm going to look on the periodic table and discover carbon has a mass of 12.01 grams in every mole. I'm going to discover hydrogen has a mass of 1.01 grams of hydrogen in one mole of hydrogen. And I'm going to discover that uh, the uh, oxygen has 16.00 grams in one mole of oxygen. Okay, and then after I do some math, I'll discover that I have this many moles of carbon, this many moles of hydrogen, this many moles of oxygen. Now I want to get to a whole number ratio, and the first thing I'm going to do to get that is I'm going to divide everything by the smallest, which is this one, 1.9719. And when I do that, then I get one of these. It's equal to 2.66 of these is equal to 2.66 of these. Oh, this is six. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I, I can't round here. So if I round here, I'll get one, three, and three, and that's that's not a compound that's going to be on my list, and I'm not going to be able to find that. Um, and when uh, So what I need to do is I need to multiply this by either two or three. So this is a, the second step that sometimes we have to do. So in this case, uh, I think I'm going to multiply it all, everything by three. And again, I have to do the same to each of these. So when I do that, I'm going to get eight carbon. I'm going to get eight hydrogen. And I'm going to get three oxygen. And I can write a formula for this, which then I can find. I think this is vanilla. <clears throat> so for that... Individual number two, pastor number two, with the material that was found on their face, that is vanilla. So anyway, this is the idea behind uh, empirical formulas and being able to go from combustion analysis, the data that comes out of combustion analysis, through our steps of converting uh, percentages to grams, then grams to moles, and then trying to get to a whole number ratio. Sometimes we have to go an extra step and multiply everything by two or three. In this case, three worked. Anyway, hope that's helpful, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. <clears throat>